everybody hear well enough? Louder? Okay. All right. Better? Okay. Um, yeah, so I tried to uh, arrive early and take care of all the AV stuff, but we'll see. I've got to switch to a demo screen. Okay. So, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming on basically the last session of the whole, the whole conference and the day, and I appreciate you sticking around. Um, today, I'm going to show a quick demo on building 3D worlds uh, for auto, but basically for um, anything you want, just bringing in uh, data to mark up and uh, make interesting a 3D space. We're going to do a little bit of Mapbox intro, just for anyone who um, doesn't know too much about the company, and then I'll dive into an actual demo um, in the software that we'll be using. So, um, who am I? So my name's Avi Chaplinsky. I am a product design manager. I work on the AR uh, team at Mapbox. Um, we, well, what that means uh, for us is working with the AR and VR and mapping uh, development community to understand how Mapbox can provide value um, to people in that space using our Unity SDK, which is what I will show, uh, SceneKit, which is Apple's iOS rendering framework, and React Native, which is a cross-platform um, uh, 3D, well, uh, development environment. I have a background in UI prototyping, um, product design, engineering, and uh, around new technologies, uh, generally speaking. And for me, because I have a love of mapping and uh, geospatial tech in general, this is where uh, working on AR at Mapbox is just a really great place to be. So yeah, um, I'm imagining this audience, people at least know about Mapbox a little bit. I'll just give an intro to explain kind of uh, how it fits into what I'm going to show. So yeah, Mapbox empowers developers uh, to connect the real world to their software. Until Mapbox came around, there wasn't really uh, developer-focused tools to bring in the geodata to um, a lot of different platforms. And what we do is uh, build those tools, but really like interface with the developers to provide the uh, tools we have across whatever platforms are of uh, interest. So uh, to give it some kind of context, um, you know, we're, we think of ourselves as like global location layer for you know, app and technology in general, similar to how Amazon Web Service is to computing and basically is the internet as far as most of us experience. Um, and Stripe enables people to bring in payments to their software without having to do all the implementation, Twilio for communications. For uh, Mapbox is the same for location. We have over 1 million registered developers, 300 um, MAUs, across a lot of kind of uh, familiar names, um, you know, CNN, Lonely Planet, Snapchat. Um, we have SDKs across a bunch of platforms. Um, so, you know, we got people all over the place. Uh, what do we provide? So we provide um, these building blocks. So global coverage of mapping data, highly customizable maps. So if you want to build something that matches a particular design or brand uh, that you have, you can use our tools. Location search for you know, geocode, geocoding, reverse geocoding, points of interest, navigation APIs for routing point A to point B, uh, telemetry data to get back information to build a better map for everybody, and uh, one of our newest pieces is uh, Vision SDK, which is still in beta, but trying to bring uh, machine learning and, and vision to improve, uh, improve the map in general and to enable new kinds of location experiences like you know, in-car heads-up displays or um, you know, whatever people are trying to make. So um, what I'm going to show today is uh, Mapbox SDK for Unity. Uh, I don't know if you, know, you guys know what uh, Unity is or not, but just super briefly, Unity is a 3D visualization and authoring tool. It's used for a lot of like gaming in particular, and so a lot of the games that we play on every platform um, were built inside of Unity. It's also used a lot for AR and VR experiences, uh, kind of one-off things. 
And um, one reason we uh, support that is, you know, location-based gaming is a big um, growth area. But just generally speaking, it's a, a growing and growing um, platform, and we wanted to make sure that we could bring the geo, <clears throat> geo data into there. So yeah, what do you get inside there? Um, so we have 3D cities and terrain models that um, you know are based off of, of data. We you can get the accurate city and terrain models, and then uh, bring in data that reflects the actual real world to kind of alter those and make them reflect or simulate whatever you're trying to uh, simulate. So yeah, uh, metadata uh, that can be brought in. Uh, the visualizations can scale to anywhere in the world because we have uh, the uh, worldwide data. We've got land usage information, um, lots of different metadata that comes from Mapbox itself. And uh, you can also bring in your own data uh, to show or improve the map for whatever you're trying to do. We also have traffic and uh, you know, pedestrian data to help make your simulation more, uh, more realistic, but also maybe uh, include safety factors or just you know, deeper and more interesting stuff. So um, yeah, another you know, interesting area that is being explored by a lot of people is the world scale AR, basically AR out in the real world. And uh, this can include things like you know, directions where you see a lot of information on the screen, but also just information uh, that might power some other experience without showing you a map directly, but it's just based off of actual geo data. So Unity, um, so our tools let you bring the real world into Unity and Unity uh, back out in the real world in AR. So um, yeah, so location-based data, you know, all this stuff. What we try and do uh, anywhere we bring the Mapbox platform is take a look at the different use cases that people are, are building and then uh, try and make some starting blocks uh, that make it easy to get started with our pieces and, and be able to customize and not start kind of from the blank screen or blank paper. Um, so now I am going to um, kind of dive into Unity and show some of the uh, features there. So I'm taking a bit of a you know gamble to see that we're able to make a uh, program switch successfully. So let's hope for the best. Yeah, and I mean, hopefully this is legible, and you know, you don't have to be able to read every bit of text, but the uh, light gray on dark gray on projector um, in a lit room is not the best, but that's just the way that this is gonna work. So, right, so like I mentioned, we've got a number of different kind of use case um, elements that are, uh, that we bring up um, to get people started. And so if you install Unity and pull down the Mapbox SDK, we have a number of kind of pieces that are already made. Uh, Location-based gaming, as I mentioned, is a big piece. And also this city simulation block, which gives you a lot of stuff um, out of the box, which is basically what I'm gonna uh, be showing here. If I can close this box, there we go. Okay, so Unity kind of has a rendering mode, like a play mode and a, a building mode, so I'm just gonna be switching between the two. But here is the basic city simulation map. And so it has kind of what you'd expect, uh, 3D buildings and road, um, has a you know, base map and then uh, styling for the 3D buildings. Uh, just to kind of show quickly, if we look at that component, it has a lot of what you would expect. So uh, we prepped it, you know, and you have the default Mapbox styles, which uh, you may have seen before, uh, but you can also use any of the, uh, if you've got your own custom styles that you've built, you can bring those in directly, um, just to kind of show what that one did. If we run again, um, we just get a different, a different base map, so this maybe matches what you're trying to build a little bit better. Okay, um, now. Uh, yeah, and so as I mentioned, you, you, know, you could go into Mapbox Studio and do any kind of styling there of the actual map imagery to get whatever uh, look and feel you, you wanted to get. So, um, yeah, anyway, the heart of what I wanted to show or what Mapbox provides is the, you know, the tile-based uh, tile metadata, which is you know, familiar to everybody here. But we have the, um, 
a Mapbox Streets version 7, um, tiles, which are kind of powering all this. And that's where the building metadata comes from and is being used to generate those 3D buildings that we saw. You've got all, you know, so here's the one we've picked to base off, uh, uh, off of. And then um, we've got uh, a lot of the parameters that come with that exposed. So here we can uh, pick different fields and, you know, define their particular um, different properties and uh, depending on what we're trying to bring in or show, we could pick different ones. Right now we're just doing buildings. But um, yeah, it could be anything that comes from the data that you have. Uh, some kind of extra um, features on top of that that I'll just show is um, filtering. So we've got that data, as I mentioned. There's a lot of metadata that comes even with those, those buildings. So we've got a lot of fields, but we could, for example, pick, um, actually I'll start with type and say that I want a, um, a commercial building. And if we run that again, we'll see that the uh, city simulator has been updated to reflect that data. So the underlying metadata has been filtered and then we get kind of a much simplified view. You can combine all that. So just for example, I can add another one and say maybe I want only commercial buildings that are greater than 50 meters and say I want all of those. And you can kind of imagine what you'll get. You get a much smaller set. But um, this is just based on whatever data we're pulling in. So yeah, the tile set, if you haven't looked at what the streets uh, one has, it has a bunch of stuff, you know, including information that comes in from OpenStreetMaps. So there's a lot there already that you can base, uh, base your simulation off of or, or change the behavior of the simulation. Buildings, roads, point of interest. Um, I think the real power comes in in the fact that you can bring in your own data because uh, depending on your application, you may have more precise road data, other infrastructure, you know, other elements you're trying to highlight, and uh, you can bring your you know, GeoJSON or other kind of uh, CSV files into Mapbox Studio and then generate a tile set from that and then bring it into here. And so that lets you yeah, use any data you have that's specific or more um, more specialized, and you'll see a very similar thing where all of the, um, you know, the fields that are exposed within that data kind of show up, and you're able to select whatever criteria you want, even just by just bringing in the raw data um, without doing anything on top. So I'm just going to show a couple other, you know, kind of quickly since we don't have a ton of time. Um, nope. So, you know, uh, street level imagery is also something that's, that we have. You know, you can imagine uh, some of the use cases we've seen are around like driver training or, um, you know, kind of immersive or kind of uh, street level um, use cases. So we, here we have the realistic texturing for the buildings, but uh, that's a map box one that you get by default, but you could really um, do your own, especially people doing gaming or otherwise trying to highlight certain areas might uh, completely replace all the texturing or just use, you know, uh, pretty uh, basic building uh, styling. And go through a couple more. So an example of more of the data that you can get from Mapbox is the uh, traffic layer. So, um, hold on a second. Um, yeah. Okay, maybe I'll do this. Now, I just want it to be off of the street. That's what I'm trying to do. So let's do this. And bear with me a second. I'm just going to reopen that since I've altered it on the fly, which is not really what I was trying to do. Um, do, do, do. Anyway, I mean, hopefully it's at all like reasonably legible, or at least you can see the city aspects, um, those being kind of the most important parts. 
So, yeah, traffic, open that. Right, so even from the Mapbox uh, elements that you get kind of by default, one of them is uh, traffic. And so here we brought in the traffic data and then used that to generate the line segments, which are then textured with this, uh, you know, uh, traffic severity indication, kind of look around the city to see what that basically looks like. Here in the layers, um, we've brought in more features, which include these uh, custom defined, but um, individual map layers that are based off of the metadata in the terrain uh, tile set. And, you know, you can imagine doing um, any number of things with this. You could be using this for some kind of routing um, or altering the behavior of a model that you have. Okay. How are we doing? So, all right. Um, oh, yeah. So, another just super quick um, thing which I find kind of a little bit fun is you can use the, um, well, where are we here? Okay, not just that. Excuse me, sorry. Okay, make sure we open that one. Don't save. Uh, this is just another use of custom data, but basically um, you can spawn features at any place you know, in the world or on the map based on whatever data you have. Here we've used that within Unity to um, make these prefab or these models show up, but you could use it for whatever. If you've got you know, trees or stoplights or you know, any other kind of entity you want to show up, you could do that. Um, and then the other piece which just showcases, um, it's using some of the other Mapbox APIs within Unity. So in this case, we're, we've got uh, the directions and uh, you know, traffic routing API. So you can just pick up these different pins and as you move them and drop them, we're doing you know, actual dynamic directions requests and using that returned routing info to generate this red line. Um, so just, you know, the idea is you can use our, any of our APIs or whatever you might have to do runtime alterations. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the piece I'll show in here. There's obviously a ton of depth here, but, you know, Unity um, is a powerful editor for a lot of things. Um, for, I'm imagining in this audience, people are just, it's kind of new. But uh, the benefit is, like I mentioned, you've got a lot of pieces that we've already built that at least get, let you get something on the screen pretty quick. And then also, um, what's handy about all this is that Unity has a free personal license, and then Mapbox has a free tier that's pretty generous. So if you want to just play around and see if this is of use to you, you don't actually have to shell out any money, which is always helpful. Um, you know, so you can figure out if you're, this offers you anything uh, you want to actually uh, use commercially. So um, another uh, key thing is that people want to build is those world scale AR examples and the same data and tools are available if you're using Unity to do that, that kind of work. Just want to kind of quickly show a few of the things that people have built. Um, this is a, a app called Hot Stepper. It just has this little character. It's kind of a city walking tour app. But it's nice because it uses basically the full stack of Mapbox APIs. They're using um, our directions and routing to define where this guy is going to walk. They are using the, um, the 3D uh, building information not to project 3D buildings, but to handle occlusion. So when this guy goes around a corner or is otherwise obscured by a building, it's actually obscured in the rendering. Just makes it seem more lifelike. He's not kind of floating. Um, and then the POI or point of interest uh, aspect as well, because when he walks past like a barber shop or something, he might his hair changes or he gets a hat or something. So even though there's not a ton of map on the screen, there's a lot of API usage. 
Um, another from the gaming space is this, uh, this kind of simple game where you fight monsters in parks and they're using routing because they follow the paths in the parks but then they're also using the fact that we've got all the metadata on the land usage so it works in any park in the world without you having to do any, any kind of work because it's just tied to parks and not a particular park. And um, another example of the same thing, occlusion. This is uh, something we made just to show. Here you've got the astronaut, Sally the astronaut, floating in space, and we're using the 3D to kind of obscure her feet as she goes behind the building, which is one piece, but another kind of just sort of cool element is uh, the shadow behind is uh, uh, generated dynamically based on that. Okay, I guess I'm just to be super quick. AR experiences are you know, coming more and more, especially with wearables on the street. Um, and so I expect we'll just see more and more of this stuff in the future. Um, yeah, so just super quickly, um, you know, at Mapbox, we're always interested in what people are trying to build with our tools. So we'd love it if, uh, if you have any ideas or you've built anything, you know, reach out to any of us. That's my contact information, but uh, you know, tweet at the company or me or whatever, and uh, we really love to see everything that people build. So super quick, uh, but like I mentioned, the API stuff from Mapbox and uh, Unity itself are both free, so you can give it a shot and see if there's something there for you. Cool. That's it. <laughs> Are there any questions? I'm happy to either do it now or maybe just wait since I think I'm at my time um, about this or AR or anything else. Um, just let me know. I have a oh, sure. Just like a unity, a few sure. Okay, so question quickly is, you know, is, is Unity using Metal to do the rendering? Um, I don't believe they are. I'm not totally sure, but given that it's cross-platform as an editor and also for deployment, I think that they're probably using something like Vulkan, I mean, probably OpenGL, at least on some of the platforms, or Vulkan, which is like a newer, uh, also cross-platform standard. So my guess is probably not, at least yet, since it would only be benefit on iOS devices. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Unity is, I mean, that's what they do, and uh, they've got a lot of really smart people there. Um, so I'm not sure the underlying pieces. I imagine a lot of it's very custom. But yeah, I mean, it's the renderer itself is super performant, um, and that's, you see it in like all the different uh, platforms they support. But it does work well. Um, so I'll just repeat the question. So do we know of anybody making a SimCity um, type game? I don't. Um, that would sound very cool. I mean, seeing more stuff based on the real world. I've seen visualizations that kind of have a lively city that is doing stuff based on the data, but it's more to look at than play with. Uh, so personally, no, but, um, you know, I don't. I haven't talked to a lot of the, you know, the game side of things, but um, that would be cool. <laughs> if I find it, I'll at least tweet it out. Okay. Cool. All right. Thank you.